Now it wasn't hard at all to learn the Six Sigma process. Came in, sat down, batted ideas around, and then went out to, uh, to the truck and executed them. The more we can do to standardize our products, our equipment, uh, it makes it easier on everybody. I really like the fact that we're getting a lot of different involvement at, at many different levels. There wasn't any, really anything hard about it to learn it once we, you know, once the information was given to us. There was no studying, there was no homework, uh, nothing along those lines. It's just making life a lot more simple for us. Yeah, it'll, it'll speed up all the processes on all the jobs that we do. The greatest part was that everybody sitting there together collectively came up with much better solutions than anybody could have on their own. Six Sigma was a, um, a term that we weren't familiar with. Um, it's something new. I'm, I mean, I work out in the field, so I, I don't uh, hear a lot of office uh, jargon. For me as a crew leader, the most difficult thing about getting started was uh, learning what Six Sigma was, what it meant, and where it was going to take us. It's nothing to be afraid of. It actually is helping us be a lot more productive and cut down on wasted time, uh, wasted effort, uh, hunting for tools. It's been a very beneficial process, I think, and everyone uh, We'll appreciate it when, it when we get everything finished. When we started the Six Sigma project, it was very important to get some focus time up front and be able to define what we were going to attack and then figure out where we were headed. So we did a three-day Kaizen, which is a particular type of meetings that are all bunched together. And we had people for three days normally field people who are out working and, and so they were a little stir crazy from time to time. Sitting in a training room, hammering out what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, and really defining the project. We asked them to sketch out the truck, all the compartments, all of the components, so that they could figure out what it was that needed to happen to make that truck more effective and, and to be a better tool for them. Then they made also a list of all of the different materials, parts, equipment, everything that they would need to have on a day-to-day -day basis out in the field to get their work done. They also went out and took pictures of all of the trucks that they used and we were able to see some of the disorganization, uh, some of the ways things were just thrown about and we were able to come up with ideas for how we needed to put things together to make them more useful. All team members put in their their two cents on where we were putting things and uh, uh, we made sure and asked everybody that worked on the team and other crews. Some things were used, some things weren't, but that's part of the team to get everybody's opinion. We met on a regular basis. We made changes to the truck incrementally from week to week, and we would look back at what we'd done. We would look at what seemed to be working and what didn't seem to work, and we would figure out a new solution. We banged ideas around, and there was a few other people from other crews that helped out uh, come up with, you know, it was a collective pool of uh, ideas, but um, we got to put in a lot of, uh, of our own ideas because this is our truck and um, we call it the Frankenstein truck because the other ones are going to be a little prettier, but this is, it's very functional. That's my Frankenstein truck right here. This is my crew truck. Uh, this is the new layout uh, due to Six Sigma. We had dead space under this step. We installed this drawer to keep some of our maintenance equipment in for our uh, equipment, got it out of the bins so we could use uh, more space for tools and parts. Uh, we installed uh, these drawer systems where everything is in reach. You don't have to dig through anything. Uh, everything's labeled. It's, it's much easier to find things. You don't have to hunt things down. We had the water cooler on top of the truck. It was causing some safety issues. Uh, so we moved it from the top into here. It's easy to, to get out. Torches used to be in the back of the truck. Um, you used to have to gather everything to uh, put your torch together. The hose would be in one place, uh, the torch would be in one place. You'd have to climb in the back of the truck just to hook everything up. Now it's all right here. You plug in, you put your torch together. It was real easy to identify what we needed with the truck since we're on the, working on the truck all the, all the time. So we knew pretty much what needed to be done with it. 
My contribution was mainly this step right here. When the trailer's not on here, it's hard to climb up in here. So you got a better center of balance to get in the back of the truck with the step. That was the main thing. I almost fell off the truck. <laughs> I remember the vise that slides out and forms the workbench on the, on the bed of the truck. We had envisioned something else entirely different and they came up with even a better idea and, and put it on themselves, welded it on themselves and, and made it all work out. And we installed these, uh, these tubes for our pump hoses. Pump hoses used to lay on the trailer. Uh, we had a lot of problems loading the tractors. We run over the pump hoses, you crush them. Uh, that usually happened in the middle of the job when you needed it. Uh, now you just pull them out, connect them together. It's a good spot for them. Uh, this is our new ladder rack to install our ladders. Uh, they used to be on top of the truck, uh, stacked three on top of each other. When you needed a ladder, you had to climb in the back of the truck and get it down. That, that created safety issues. Now we put them on here like this. Uh, it's a lot quicker, a lot faster. Uh, there's no climbing in the back. I just grab them and go. And this is our boot bin. I hung them up. It freed up some space on the bottom. The maintenance worker's boots, my boots, and the operator's boots. Because that's usually maintenance worker's in the hole first, then the crew leader, then the operator has to get off the tractor. The most beneficial change to the truck, I believe, is the uh, drawer system that we put in. Uh, it organized all the tools, parts, and everything's labeled, so there's no question of where anything is. We also have uh, our warehouse replenishment form, which Dan McMahon came up with. Uh, it's a lot. We used to have to go through a catalog, pick out parts. Uh, this way we just mark it on the sheet. It saves a lot of time. This also makes for a very good training tool. Well, we have new guys that start that don't know our parts. Uh, you send them to a truck for something, they're digging, they don't know what they're looking for. As long as you tell them the name that's in the catalog, it's right here on here. All they have to do is come to the drawer, open it, and their part's right there. In the back of the bed, it's real dangerous when this bed's packed full of stuff and you're trying to walk through it. Uh, right now, you can walk from front to the back, no problems. We installed this sleeve to hold this rock bar in. Uh, usually, you kept it in here, had to dig around for it. Uh, usually, the rakes and shovels were stuck back here somewhere. Uh, now, they're right up here. You just clip them in. They're out of the way. Everything's organized and easy to get to. We brought in a fire truck because we wanted to see for a vehicle that has to be ready to go at all times, that you have to have easy access, that you have to have a good power supply, and that you have to have uh, ready tools. How were they going to be able to make their vehicle ready to go at all times? So the different clamps, how they had some of the tools clamped onto the truck, uh, the steps, some of those things actually came from a review of the fire truck and, and how it was used. And it uh, ended up being a very good collaboration and, and worked out well. Uh, we saved time and money. Uh, we did most of the fabrications ourselves, uh, installed all the equipment we bought. Uh, we did it because uh, we knew where we wanted it. We knew what we wanted. Uh, instead of having to go back and change stuff vendors do, uh, it was put where we needed it and where we wanted it. When they come out on a, a repair at 2 in the morning, they know what's on the truck. They know how to access it. They know all the materials are going to be on the truck. The advantage is for having the crew trucks all the same. A lot of times I have crews that are out on jobs. They get relieved by other crews. There won't be any downtime uh, for searching through different bins looking for the parts or tools. So this team, not only did they come up with the ideas, they installed them and they made a fabulous product that will now be transferred to the other work trucks and can help all of our crews here at Water Utilities become more efficient and more effective. I'm really pleased with the attitude that they came in. They came in with a real positive attitude to try to come up with a, a better solution. And from what I hear, uh, not only from this crew, but from other crews, they're very excited about the, the improvements and what they're doing and, and the way it's going to improve the efficiency. In an eight hour day, if you, if you do a job that takes six hours, it's pretty hard to start another job, a full job. But, but if we can cut that down to four hours or three hours, then I'll be able to do two jobs in the same amount of time we've been doing one job. We started out kind of as separate individuals with different ideas about you know what should we should be doing. Everybody had us had a solution, uh, but together we had a, the complete solution to it. So you know in essence you know we just achieved just major efficiency gains and cost savings from the, from this project. It makes my job 100% easier. <laughs>